Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. One of the most common, I'm not even going to call it a question, and it's a, a comment that I'd like to dispel, uh, is that, hey, I love museums, or I love museum ships, or I love ships, but it's too bad I didn't go to curator school so I could work on them. Uh, so today I want to do a brief video about some of the types of jobs that are available in the museum ship field because we're not all curators. We didn't all go to curator school. There are a lot of other ways into museums or the museum ship field than you might think of. So first off, there's a link in the description below to a real old video that we did about my backstory and how I ended up in the museum field. Many of you weren't subscribed to the channel at the time that that came out. Uh, so feel free to take a look at that. And uh, you'll notice that that's not a typical path to get here. Um, the word obsession has been thrown around a few times. Like, most people are not that into a single thing. However, that doesn't mean that you can't work in a museum. So, um, these are not necessarily all jobs that Battleship New Jersey has, and these are not necessarily all the jobs that exist in the museum ship field. Uh, we, we run the gamut from ships like Midway, Intrepid, and Missouri that all have um, close to 100 staff members. So basically any job you can think of, they're, they're like the Smithsonian's of the museum ship world. And then you've got smaller ships where a single person or two people or a group of volunteers, not even any paid staff, are running the whole show. So really, if you're thinking about a, a career path in museums, that is the first thing you should think of. Do you want to be the everything at a museum? Do you want to get into it and work on smaller museums and get to do some of everything and not know what you're going to do when you get up in the morning and go to work because whatever ends up happening that day is what you have to deal with? Or do you want to be at more of the, the like big museum, traditional museum type thing where you are a cog in the machine and your only job is your job and you have to stay in your lane because if you try to do too much outside of that, you step on someone else's toes. Or, of course, those are large and small museums respectively. There's also a medium size in the middle. And that's more what we have here at Battleship New Jersey. Uh, we have, I'd, I'd guess, about an average of 20 full-time staff since uh, over the span that I've been here. Some years we've had less thanks pandemic, some years we've had more. Um, and then we have maybe as many as 80 part-time staff, uh, again, depending on the time zone over the course that I've been here. So uh, those part-timers do everything from tour guide, security, ticketing, although we do have full-time jobs in a lot of these uh, front of house positions as well. So. Well, that gives you an idea of uh, we are probably a medium to large museum ship, uh, pretty firmly in medium if you're just looking at museum. So start off with, obviously, most museums have a collections team, and that is often uh, grouped under the term curator. But there's a bunch of other jobs under that. Uh, so like everything that you think of when you think of quote unquote, curator school, the uh, collections managers and the conservators and preparators and the exhibit design folks and guys like that. And it's important to mention that not everybody went to school to be a curator or historian, things like that. This does incorporate people who are uh, more in the construction field, the building thing, like exhibit design is uh, also graphic design combined with research, things like that. Some major jobs that uh, many museums have are everything from 
an accountant or an HR person. Sometimes those are combined into one. Sometimes they're, they're completely different departments and people. Depends on the size of the museum. Uh, so things that you would think of at a normal business because museums are operating like a normal business. So you need human resources and hiring and, and you need accounting and payroll and things like that. Uh, so if you went to school for a more normal business career path, some of my coworkers fall into that and they also love museums. So they got a job in the nonprofit world, knowing full well that they would probably make more money in a traditional business, but because it's what they love doing, being at a museum and also what they're trained in doing, being an accountant, whatever the case may be, um, there's a perfect crossover there. I've already mentioned uh, security. So that, that is everything from trained law enforcement personnel who are retired or between normal law enforcement jobs and, and down to regular folks who check tickets and help get guests on the right tour route. As a nonprofit, fundraising is important, as is grant writing. So many of our museums have one or more staff members who fall into those development type categories, uh, reach out to people, cultivate relationships to try and raise money for the ship. And they'll uh, also work on getting members for the ship and uh, applying for grants and things like that. Probably the most important job in museums, the whole reason why museums exist is education. Museum education is very different from classroom education because classroom education, you got the same group of kids for a year. You get to know them, you get to build on things week after week. Museum education, uh, you might only see those kids one time. If you're a really good museum, you may get a couple of touch points uh, with those kids over time or adults, not limited to kids here. So it is a completely different style of education. You're also trying to use your site, your macro artifact as the classroom space and the topic of education, but also tie it into things that folks that are now several generations removed from the use of this vessel can relate to. So that is, in my opinion, one of the most complicated fields in museums. Um, and there are entire programs that you can do for that. You can go either the, the straight education route or uh, public history type programs can also intersect with museum education. One aspect of museum education is tour guides, and that is the largest single group of people that this museum, at least, and many museums for that matter, employ. So we have a lot of tour guides to cover all the tours that we do. Uh, right now, we have approximately 40 individuals who would fit in that category, and they come from all walks of life. Some of them are retirees looking for a part-time job to stay busy and they work one day a week or less. Uh, some of them are recent college grads or are still in college and they're looking to break into the museum field. And for many of us, myself included, tour guide is the entry level position. You start working that part-time when you're in school or when you've just gotten out of school and you learn a lot of the skills or you figure out where your deficiencies are so that you can go back to school and get the skills that you need. And then from there, uh, oftentimes as positions open up higher up in the museum field, museums will look at their tour guide pool or their, their pool of entry level positions, including security and ticketing and, and other those sorts of staff uh, to fill the positions above that because they already know how the museum operates. So for uh, those of you who are out there who, who throw resumes in for mid-level or upper-level jobs in museums and you don't seem to hear back or get any traction um, and you curse that museums are specifically hiring from within for these upper-level positions, I think that's a good thing. You take the entry-level position, figure out uh, how that museum operates, and within a, a 
short period of time, depending on your experience level, you get to those mid-level and upper-level positions. The, the final point to consider is that uh, even if you can't get a museum job, everybody's looking for volunteers. And by volunteering at a museum, you will get the skills you need to be employed there. And I know just like when we're hiring mid-level positions, we look at our entry-level folks. Uh, when we're hiring entry-level positions, we look at our volunteer pool first. Even if you're uh, working in the private sector, making good money and history or museum work, is just a hobby. It's not a vocation for you like it is for many of us. Volunteering once a month or once a week or whatever you have available is a great way to do that. Most museums, nearly all museums are looking for volunteers. They don't have hours requirements by and large. Uh, so if you think that you can't volunteer because you've only got one day a month that you might be free, that, that's not any sort of restriction. Uh, and finally, do some homework. Go to your local uh, museum ship or museum if, if you're not really into museum ships and check out their contact page and just look at the list of job titles that you see on there or go on LinkedIn or one of those types of job websites and type in a museum and, and look at what sorts of people are working there and what their job titles are to get an idea of how broad, how many different types of backgrounds folks come to, how many different types of jobs uh, the museum field has. Um, and it may well be something that you have experience in. Marketing, advertising is another field that is uh, that many museums employ staff in. Likewise, events planning or management is another one. And I didn't even talk about restoration, maintenance, plumbing, electrical, uh, metalworking, woodworking, floor laying. All of these sorts of uh, skills jobs or trades jobs are also critical to museum operations. HVAC work. Um, museums have all of these systems. Retail operations, just about every museum has a store, even food service. Many museums have cafes. There are lots of, uh, th th this museum has a liquor license. If you're a bartender, you could potentially uh, have the skills to work at a museum. Like th there's lots of options here. Uh, or, or I have a friend who is an expert at cathodic protection. So no museum probably hires somebody just to do the cathodic protection on their museum ship. So he works on all the museum ships around the country and goes and installs and, and checks on the cathodic protection on all of them. So even if you're not specifically working for a museum and you're self-employed or you're working for a bigger uh, company, like uh, many of the HVAC companies are contracted out to work on museum ships to maintain their uh, HVAC and probably traditional museums too. So even if you're working for another company or uh, we contract out to exterminators and we've got an exterminator who comes in who um, specializes in museums and knows not to spray chemicals around artifacts and, and things like that. So there are all sorts of different ways, even if you don't specifically work for the museum, to still work in and support the museum field. What's your professional background? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.